join us as we uh, finish my irrigation system here. Ah! So the grand plan, let me get the middle bench here, grand plan was to have a um, irrigation system that runs in the back, uh, or main line, and little feeders that goes into spigots into each of those pots. That's the game plan. So this is what I was left with. So um, that's the game plan. So I have four benches in a row here, or a column, broke a branch there. Um, and then second thing is I gotta find my last branch and or bench and I gotta find my next water source That's my water source. It's with a um, Another connector there. That was a full PVC until I excavated it. So And I need to move that water source to the back corner there The reason why I'm going to move to the back corner is uh, it's a little bit of easy maintenance and I'm gonna use uh, one of these what I did in my last video Rainbird conversion kit, riser conversion kit to do into my uh, drip system. So that's how I'm going to make it into a regular riser into a drip system. Okay. Uh, reason why I do it that way is because um, it's the change of pressure and it gives me a chance to filter um, smaller particulates before they hit into the sprayer. So um, it's kind of like a double safe in that in that in that sense. So um, I look out a little ahead myself. I um, it was daylight saving, so I said, you know, I got an extra hour. Didn't happen. I took a nap, and that's where I ended. So far, I got was to dig a trench from my first bench, my lead bench, where the water source will eventually go to, all the way down to my fourth bench here. Um, I did a small, and so the idea is to change that to a male coupler, change that to 90 degrees, shoot, shoot that up to a solid pipe, um, put a 90, put another right, um, a um, three-quarter male, no, not three-quarters, half-inch male on that side, and then connect it to the conversion kit. Um, make sure it rides all the top. And then one of these T's, one of these T's will go all the way across the top of the bench, across the top of the bench. And then the other T will come down with a nine degree, uh, with a five-eighths inch plastic, down this line, all the way across this bench, all the way down the row and then team to each one so that's a game plan let's see how far i get uh, wish me luck on this one so we're back again so um now this time this should look familiar this is a that rain bird um, trip system conversion so i'm going to attach that to the end over there and then i'm going to do a t from this end down to my next row so that's what we're going to do next all righty that suction's done so out of that the um the converter from the sprinkler head to the drip system there okay i got my five eighths inch tubing across there and i went down the supply line on that side and i made the elbow and then all the way down here and that curls over so next move is i cut the tube here i'm gonna put a t um let me get my t right here i'm gonna get this t here put it right there and it goes up to this bench an elbow and then all the way across and then right here, connecting that T is gonna go straight to that bench with a T to an elbow all the way across, all the way down to be another elbow that goes up and elbows that goes across that bench. So hopefully, maybe another 20 minutes. I'll probably get all of this finished up, I hope. And then I can test for pressure at that point. All right, let's wish me luck here, guys. All righty. Well, Tubes are not, these tubes never really um, cooperate where they're kind of cool on the cool side. Um, but you can tell it's, I hit them in between the bench gaps. Um, that's where my tube's gonna show up. Um, that kind of does a couple things. It hides um, the main tubing, the main line itself. And then it really supports that when it gets hot. Uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to let these guys sit in the sun for a couple days, heat up, and then I'm going to move them so they're a little more straighter. Um, 
they're a little curved because how they were packaged or pre-packaged. Um, so that's the, kind of the goal right now. Um, it kind of looks kind of funky. I did move it. Let me back up really quick. Again, that's the main line up through that branch here. Okay, that goes through that supply line right through the elbow and then straight down these benches. Um, and that should support and hide my main line. Um, they just go straight to my tree. There's one of my uh, Princess Persimmons. And then, and then um, I'm gonna let it, these two beings kind of heat up for the next couple of days. So I can start mm, kind of moving them towards where I want them. Um, they're a little stiff right now because of the, how they're packaged or pre-packaged. And um, again, if you notice I moved the line off center just because Again, it just looked kind of funky, and they look much better when they're just really close to that support column. So I got another one line, two lines, three lines. Three of these lines still to go, and then I can start attaching the spray hose, and then we'll figure where we'll go from there. All right, so uh, it's been a couple months since I uh, finished this video, and I had a chance to kind of work on it. So here's the irrigation line. Um, it's been buried down and they go straight across. I mean, so let me give you an idea. Um, this bench I just finished. Okay, so there's the supply line. Okay, goes across there. So it's buried with this T, so it's kind of buried in it. So what we're gonna do next is add these, um, these uh, smaller spray hose now, or these, uh, sp what do they call spit spocket or spot spitters. Um, so we're gonna connect it from these um, half inch um, or five eighths inch uh, supply hose to these uh, one eighth inch or 0.125 uh, inch hose to the spot spitter. So that's what we're gonna do right now. It's not that hard. The, the hard part is actually getting the supply line all the way down that's hitting all in my bench. And actually it's just a compression fitting at the very end that holds everything tight together. Um, I do have a um, a, uh, what is what these these um, conduit clips that I made that secures on there so it doesn't pop up or down so kind of secure that way I'm gonna actually work on this one next is I'm gonna pop out um, the hose and I'm gonna show you how to punch it and go uh, these lines are actually pretty easy to make so I made these about 18 inches long I put a um, a connector on one end bit spotter on the other end and I made about, uh, I think I made about a hundred of those guys. Um, so, and then depending on your benches, so you can see my benches here, how your benches are set up. You may need uh, two per tree. Um, some of my bigger ones in the back, that's like three per tree. Um, so it just gives you an idea of how much you'll need uh, depending on your um, supply line, okay? And I'm using the red ones. I forgot the red ones um, or the orange ones. Um, there, I think it was 4.6 gallons uh, per hour. Um, I used the green one, it was a, a little too much. There was one smaller amount, um, it was three gallons per hour. I should have picked up that one. Those are the gray ones, um, but you probably need more of them. So it depends how long you want to spray. I only spray for about two to three minutes tops. And then um, during the summertime, I'll spread that out um, like twice a day. Um, oh, good lord, Shadow is all uh, dirty over there. Jeez, he just took a bath too. Yeah, so let me get a tripod and you can see what I'm doing here. Oh, let's try this again. So um, try and make sure your tubing is on the cooler end. When it gets heats up, it it's, uh, gets really malleable. I'm going to punch a hole here. Okay, let's punch. Okay, all the way in. Make sure you hear this little, you know, the little popping noise. I'm going to put another one right here. And then take your um, compression setting or the compression end. You just stick it in the hole. Make sure you hear the pop. And then again, like the old video, make sure the little hump, that's where the water spits out. You wanna face the tree. Okay. I'm gonna take, grab another one, same end. Put in a little hole. And then that's it, so. It's, that's the part of it. Um, 
So the hard part is to set up your entire bench the same way. So once you got one going, it goes pretty easy. Uh, let me just finish this up and then I'll do some last minute commentaries. Just like that, uh, my irrigation system is done finally. Um, this took, oh geez, six months to get going just because of my uh, extracurricular activity at school. Um, took some of my time away from this, but it's, it's not that difficult. Um, the hard part is actually this uh, digging the, the ground and just trying to lay out the, the water supply line. And that was the hardest part. Uh, it's probably smart to do that right at the beginning of winter um, or in our case um, like fall time when the grounds are really uh, on the moist end uh, it, it was easier to dig than it was dry uh, it was compact dirt so and then the next thing is if you could um, find your layout i think the hardest part for me was trying to find a layout that was um, you know really pretty um, it, it kind of hit the the supply lines as much as i could um, and that really helped out, I think, um, than my other one. My other one, it was just laying on top. It's really ugly. I think this is a much more um, a appealing um, to the eye. It's kind of hidden. Um, and I think, uh, I think the last part is um, it should take you about several hours. Just kind of prepare for it. Um, like getting the supply lines all, all hooked up ready. That took me about at least three hours with, this, with the help of my son. Um, it's just because it's it's really like hands-on stuff. It, it's not something you can automate. And then um, one last thing to make sure um, after you get everything set up is to run it a couple times. Um, and don't do this like the day before you go on a vacation because it ends in disaster. Um, you want to do this at least a couple of weeks before you leave. And you want to make sure um, each of the trees um, get adequate watering. Um, that's one thing. Um, and the second thing is make sure all your lines work. Um, and then last is just to double check that um, everything kind of works um, before you kind of set it and forget it. Uh, other than that, um, this is very similar to my last house uh, I did. And then um, I think I'm getting better <laughs> at doing this irrigation system. Um, so if you guys need help with irrigation, uh, hit me up, you know, I have no problem. This is kind of fun. Um, Try not to do it in, uh, you know, like the heat of summer because it's actually pretty hot. Um, this is actually a, a pretty cool day today. So um, if you guys like uh, the video, like and subscribe. If you got any other stuff you want to um, add on to it, leave in the comments for me. I'll, I'll respond back um, and I'll put all the uh, list of materials and stuff that I bought and where I bought them. So if you guys are having trouble finding them, um, I'll give you my source. Um, I did screw up one spot, so I'll give you a hint on that one. Um, these tubings are 1 8 inch or 1.25 inch. Um, I bought the quarter inch by accident. Um, so I got a, a thousand foot of quarter inch. So anybody who's that quarter inch, you want to trade for something, I have uh, a thousand feet waiting for you if you're using the other tubing. Um, so again, the one, well, the quarter inch tubing, uh, if you go to Home Depot, the little, the little drip irrigation they have there, that works with that one. Um, I don't like it um, just because uh, it takes too much room um, and then I, the tubing looks much more uh, it's thicker so I, it just doesn't look as appealing so that's kind of why I didn't go with that one um, and it's actually a little slightly more expensive I think these tubings um, the sp spot spitters were like under 10 cents each uh, versus the uh, spitters at Home Depot or Lowe's are like 25 cents each so again it's almost a double the cost so on that like and subscribe thank you for watching Thank you for supporting. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.